Hello guys! So let me welcome you to the fifth part of our lecture video on shareholders' equity. Let's focus on retained earnings. So uh, remember that retained earnings is also a part of shareholders' equity. This is another component of shareholders' equity. First, what is the nature of retained earnings? Ano ang ibig sabihin ng retained earnings? Retained earnings represent the cumulative balance of profits and losses after distribution of dividends to shareholders. So in simple terms, retained earnings is the cumulative balance of profits and losses in the prior periods after distribution of dividends. Diba na-discuss na natin yung dividends in the fourth part of our lectures? So this time, magfo-focus tayo sa nagiging source ng dividends. Next, what are the other components of retained earnings? Nandiyan sila prior period errors, effects of changes in accounting policy, reclassifications of certain other comprehensive income items, and other capital adjustments. Relax lang, hindi natin ipo-focus itong other components. Ang tatandaan nyo lang sa ngayon, ang components ng retained earnings ay number one, beginning balance. Ang magpapa-increase kay retained earnings would be profits. Next, ang magpapa-decrease naman kay retained earnings would be losses and dividends. So, apat lang na components ang tatandaan nyo for now kay retained earnings. etong ibang components niya, i-discuss yan sa ibang topics. Malinaw tayo. So, relax lang. Apat na components lang ng RE ang tatandaan nyo. Okay? Sige. Now, anong tawag sa retained earnings pag nagkaroon ng, re ng negative balance? That would be deficit. Hindi siya tatawaging retained earnings, of course. Magiging deficit ang tawag sa kanya pag naging negative na siya. Now, there will be two categories of retained earnings. Namely, unappropriated and appropriated retained earnings. Nabanggit na kanina sa dividends yung unappropriated retained earnings, tama? Ano nga ulit ang unappropriated retained earnings? That is the unrestricted portion of the total retained earnings. Dito, ka, dito pwedeng kumuha ng mga dividends ang corporation. Dito siya pwede kumuha ng dividends na pang bibigay kila shareholders. Okay? Next. Pag sinabi naman na nating uh, appropriated, meaning restricted naman yung portion ng retained earnings na ito. Therefore, bawal siyang ipamigay as dividends. Kasi nga, restricted. Okay? Sige, focus tayo sa appropriated retained earnings. What are the three categories of appropriations? Legal appropriation, contractual appropriation, and Voluntary or also known as discretionary appropriation. Okay, let's explain them one by one. Pag sinabi natin legal appropriation, that is appropriations as required by law. Kaya siya legal kasi nire-require siya ng law. Example, appropriation for treasury shares. Ang sabi ni Corporation Code, kapag meron kang treasury shares, dapat mag-appropriate ka rin ng the same amount of the cost of your treasury shares sa retained earnings mo. Kaya ang pure example natin for legal appropriation would be appropriations for treasury shares. Hindi ka pwedeng mag-acquire ng treasury shares kung insufficient ang retained earnings mo. Okay? Next, another example for legal appropriation is appropriations in accordance with quasi reorganization, which we will be discussing on the last part of shareholders' equity. Okay? So, dalawa ang binigay ko examples ng legal appropriation, appropriation for treasury shares, and appropriations in accordance with quasi-reorganization. Next, contractual appropriation. By the term contractual, we mean appropriations required by third-party agreements. Examples would be banks. Pag sinabi ng banko o company, Dapat mag-appropriate ka ng certain amount sa retained earnings mo. That is what you call contractual appropriations. Example, 
appropriation for compliance with agreements with third parties. Last one, voluntary or discretionary appropriation. This is a category of appropriation according to the will of the board of directors. Kung gusto mag-appropriate ng board of directors, that is what you call voluntary or discretionary appropriation. Example, appropriation for expansion. Okay? Now, lahat ng appropriations na magpo-fall sa tatlong categories na ito, lahat sila restricted. Hindi biyan pwede ipang declare ng dividends. Klaro? Okay. How do we account for appropriations? O first, establishment. Kapag nag establish tayo ng appropriation, kailangan natin siyang tanggalin kay retained earnings account, ililipat natin or i-reclassify natin sa tinatawag nating retained earnings appropriated for blank. Dapat naka-disclose kung appropriated para saan yan, para mas malinaw kung para saan yung appropriation na ito. Okay? That's for the establishment of the appropriation. Now, pag natapos na yung yung objective ng appropriation, i-release mo na siya from restriction or appropriation. Ano entry? Babalik ta rin mo lang yung establishment entry natin. This time, tatanggalin mo na siya sa appropriated retained earnings, lilipat mo siya sa general retained earnings account natin. Okay? And also, tandaan nyo, ang appropriation din disclose yan sa notes for more detailed explanations. Alright? So we are done. We are done with your retained earnings. Yun lang ang tatandaan nyo sa retained earnings. Yung unappropriated and appropriated. Okay? Now, let's move on to the computation of the total shareholders equity. Since tapos na natin yung components ng shareholders equity from our first lecture video, isasummarize na natin siya rito. How do you compute for the total shareholders equity? Share capital plus subscribe share capital and share premium. Anong tawag natin sa tatlong yan? That is your contributed or paid in capital. Pag pinag-add natin yung tatlong yan, makukuha nyo ay si contributed or paid in capital. Other components of total shareholders equity? Retained earnings. Pero pag naka-deficit siya, negative naman siya. Okay? Next. Nabanggit din natin sa first lecture video about kay OCI, tama? Pero hindi ko siya diniscuss dito. Ang tatandaan nyo lang kasi, kay OCI, ito yung mga items ng income and expenses na hindi na i-report under profit or loss. Ano examples ng OCI natin? Well, hindi ako magbibigay dito ng examples kasi mas detalyado siyang i-discuss in the presentation of financial statements. Okay? So, hindi ko i-cover yung OCI natin dito. Pero ang tatandaan nyo lang, ang OCI, ito yung mga items ng income and expenses na hindi na i-report under or bawal i-report under profit or loss. Okay? And also, OCI is a component of shareholders' equity. And lastly, treasury shares, pero nakadedact dapat yan. Then here you go. Here's your total shareholders' equity. Those are all your components of shareholders' equity. And that's it. That's the end of discussion on retained earnings. We are down to our last topic for shareholders' equity, which is the quasi-reorganization. Refer to the next video for the discussions on quasi-reorganization.